Welcome back, folks. Thanks for joining me again. This week, we're just going to have some fun, nothing too serious. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, well, this week we're going to talk about movie trailers. This isn't going to be quite the same as previous weeks. I'm not going to specifically teach you anything, but I thought that it would be fun to do some fun facts and information about the way that movie trailers progressed over the last couple of years to be quite more prominent than they used to be and what exactly the different studios hope to achieve from those trailers. So the reason that I decided to focus on movie trailers for this episode is because recently there's been lots and lots of talk about the inconsistencies from movie trailers that are shown on TV or the internet and the actual movie itself. Missing scenes, edited scenes, reshot scenes, things of that sort. And so hopefully some of these points help explain that just a little bit better, as well as maybe give you some information that you didn't know. Now, movie trailers didn't used to be a huge deal, obviously. Movie theaters have traditionally just used movie posters. In fact, they still do that today, just sometimes on a much larger scale. All the way back to the original black and white movies that first started coming out when motion picture became a thing. And they just simply had a bit of text on the front of the theater that said what movie was showing and maybe what time it was playing at. It's all part of advertisement. That's all it is. It's just a gimmick to get you more hyped up, more interested in the movie, and to get you out there to sell you tickets. In the most recent years, it seems that the studios have been struggling with knowing how much is too much, how early is too early, and what is good enough for a product. So we see that in the evolution of simple trailers like you would see on TV for any rom-com movie, for example. Just really simple trailers, maybe some jokes, maybe some emotion invoked in those trailers, and then the title of the movie. It's, it's not meant to be a huge secret, but with other franchises, specifically long-lasting action and adventure franchises and sci-fi franchises, and of course superhero comic adaptations, trailers have become a bigger and bigger part in marketing because they know that those fan bases will sit around until midnight just to see the launch of a new trailer just so that they can have seen it first and have experienced that aspect of the movie and now there's so much secrecy surrounding that that things like the movie posters themselves the original iterations of those posters that come out months and months before the movie do are just simply called a teaser poster because they don't even want to show too much on that as to what's coming in the movie it's usually just a very simple minimalistic background with just the logo so they're trying to get you excited about the movie and with doing that they're trying to get you talking about it not about what's in the movie but about what's amiss from the promotional material itself because then that gets all kinds of theories and and ideas going about what could happen in the movie or what's happening leading up to the movie anyways all that aside let's start off with reason number one as to why movies don't match the trailers as often anymore. The first point is that a lot of these trailers are released so early on in the production that they're still finalizing shots and animations and things like that, especially on these big budget, heavy digitally rendered movies. So for example, superhero movies or sci-fi movies, you might get a little five second video on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter a week before the actual trailer launches teasing that trailer. And that first trailer itself might match what that original poster iteration I was talking about was and simply be a teaser trailer, which means it's not going to give much exposition. It's just going to introduce maybe a couple of the exciting characters, a couple of cool shots and probably a voiceover with some epic music. Those are about the standard ingredients for a teaser trailer nowadays. So what ends up happening is you end up having a teaser for a teaser trailer. And teaser trailers are a relatively new thing in the last couple of years because before there was only ever just a normal trailer that would show either on TV or online or before the movie that you went and sat down to watch. You wouldn't have all of this build up to an actual trailer. And so what they're trying to do with this is again, to direct the interest in this movie, build it and build it and build it and build it, release tickets early, have people buy them in swarms. A lot of this 
comes into play because of these new theaters that offer the ability to buy tickets ahead of time. So if you want the people to buy tickets ahead of time, you're gonna have to have previews of the movie or trailers of the movie ahead of time in order to garner that much interest in it. So going back to the main point, because a lot of these trailers are still released, when even sometimes principal photography or other edits are still happening on the movie. There are a lot of things that you see in the trailer that are intended to be in the movie, but often don't end up making the cut. Some examples of these, and I'm gonna pull from stuff that I know and that I love, are The Last Jedi and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Now, The Last Jedi trailer only had a couple of shots, which ultimately didn't make it into the final cut of the movie. And that's, and that's fine. We're expecting to possibly see some of that stuff in bonus features or deleted scenes once the Blu-ray or DVD version come out within the next couple of months, most likely. But if you go back a year earlier to Rogue One, a Star Wars story, there was a good, probably close to 30 or 50% of that trailer that ended up not making it into the final movie. And a lot of that had to do with reshoots. Now reshoots can dramatically change a movie, either because you completely switch out an actor so you can't use those existing sequences anymore, or because the reshoot changes the storyline, and whether for the better or worse, and that has to change the final product because those original sequences filmed didn't ultimately make it in. Sometimes you have to cut a character completely. Sometimes an actor films a portion or an entire movie and they either recast or cut that character out completely. So because of all of these moving parts and because you're trying to get stuff out there so quickly, you have to anticipate what you think is gonna be in there, but it still ends up being a guessing game depending on what the studios want. And studios are a perfect segue into reason number two for why trailers differ from the final movie. And that's because the studios don't cut the trailers themselves, at least not a lot of them anymore. With the existing footage that you have and the special effects that you've already created for those sequences, trailers are usually tasked out to third party companies. A really good example of this is the trailer for Suicide Squad. The original trailer was created by a completely different company than the second trailer by a company called Trailer Park, which was much more widely well received. That all actually led to them having their own take on the movie, the final cut of the movie. It's it's said that there are two versions of the movie, one that's a director's version and then one that was recut with the studio's direction. And that was this other company that ultimately the studio figured the trailer was well, more well received than the original. We should go back to these people and see if they can help us out. So studios don't usually end up cutting it all together themselves. They do have a lot of direction and ultimately the overhead company will say, we want to do this or this specifically with the trailer, as is the case for for the sequel to J.J. Abrams' more recent Star Trek franchise, Into Darkness. It's been said by J.J. Abrams that he didn't specifically want the main character to be as much of a secret as it had been kept, but the studio pushed for it, and what the studio says is law, basically. <laughs> now, I didn't say anything specific there. For those of you that haven't yet seen Star Trek Into Darkness, go ahead and watch it. I won't spoil anything for you there. But that's just to show that there isn't as much power floating around with the people that act Actually create the movies as you think. The directors, the actors, they all like to talk about what they want out of a movie and what they loved working in a movie for, how the final product turned out, but they don't really have any push when it comes to the marketing of the movie, which ultimately is what helps pay for the movie, because without any marketing you don't get the notoriety. Without the notoriety you are risking that people are just gonna go and see it of their own desire. Anyways, point number three really just has to do with some of those marketing gimmicks that you see. Most recently, we have the Avengers Infinity War trailer. This is a very good example where watching the progression of the trailers released is almost an exciting experience in itself. At Comic-Con the other year, there was a longer trailer released and leaked online for the Infinity War movie, which comes out this May. I didn't end up seeing that, and I waited around until the official trailer was released. Upon watching the official trailer, and just so that I've said it, spoiler alert, there was a scene right near the end of the trailer where Thor 
turns around and you can see very clearly that he has his eye patch on from the end of Thor Ragnarok, which was released a couple of months earlier. But back even earlier in 2017, when the Comic-Con trailer was released, nobody knew officially how Thor Ragnarok was going to end. And so to not spoil that ending with his missing eye, they completely edited out the eye patch or edited on the eye patch for the trailer, whichever was easier, so that the original trailer shows him with two eyes and the official trailer shows him with one eye. Now that was only really privy to people who really wanted to spoil the trailer for themselves and go and watch it ahead of time. But come the Super Bowl version of the Infinity War trailer, we can also see that at the end, the shot of Captain America running at the screen originally didn't have shields. And that was because they were hiding the fact that they wanted to have him donning these Wakanda style gauntlet shields that you can see in the Super Bowl trailer. So that's just a really quick observation as to how they have added and removed to the trailer things that don't spoil the movie specifically, but little details that fans love and watch for and know that it's part of Marvel's marketing that they're gonna throw these gimmicks in. And so then that's what they keep an eye out for. And point number four, just a couple of notes to finish everything off. Some people don't know what a red band trailer is and what a green band trailer is. If all you do is watch movie trailers on TV or in the theaters of the movies that you go to, you're only going to see trailers appropriate to that movie's rating. So on television, you're not gonna see anything that's overly violent, overly gory, overly sexual. There will be aspects of those in the trailers, but when you go and see a movie that's 18A or R, then you will see these red band trailers ahead of more mature movie audiences because aside from what the rating of the trailer is before the rating of the movie the other aspect that controls that is the demographic of people watching that movie so for example if you go and see a Disney Pixar movie you are almost guaranteed to see a trailer for any upcoming Disney and or Disney Pixar film because they want to promote their own material over another studios say for example DreamWorks and if you go and you see the newest installment in the Nightmare on Elm Street series, you're going to have to expect to see previews for any upcoming horror movies as well as psychological thrillers or movies of that genre. Now, romance films, historical films, and rom-coms all tend to have a similar audience or at least a crossover audience to several, if not all of those movies. And so those movies will often show like trailers ahead of those movies that don't necessarily match up exactly with the movie you're about to see. Action movies movies and buddy movies, same same type of deal. Horror movies, sci-fi movies, and fantasy movies, again, same kind of thing. You'll see crossover trailers for a sci-fi movie in a horror showing or vice versa because it's been noted that audiences are very similar in those respects to which kinds of movies they enjoy and they're more likely to go and see those ones if they're promoted. So there you have it. Just a fun few facts about movies. I am one of those people that will watch those teaser trailers anyways and will watch the teaser of the teaser trailer and will watch the upcoming trailers. There is usually a point where I will stop watching any more trailers because I just don't want to have too much spoiled for me for the movie upcoming. But I definitely love to watch the trailers and I love to analyze them. I love to read the analyses of them online. People talking about what does this shot in this frame mean? What does this character possibly hiding behind this other character mean? And some of them get pretty far out there and outlandish with their ideas. But especially when it comes to sci-fi movies or superhero movies, then I'm all in for that. So if there's something that you want to discuss about the upcoming Black Panther movie. You can post it in the comments below. Please don't post any spoilers to it if you see it before anybody else. But that one's going to be good. And then, of course, there's Infinity War coming in May. And there's also the Han Solo standalone movie from Star Wars coming in May. So there's a lot of movies upcoming just for this spring-summer season. And I'm super excited to dive into those. And I actually can't stand any more trailers because I just want to see the movie now. So if you can't get a hold of me, it's because I'm at the theater camping out for weeks ahead of time. We'll see you next time.